In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of bone formation. We're going to focus on what's called endochondral bone formation, which forms all the bones of the body except the clavicle and the bones of the skull. So in this slide, I'm going to do the basics in words, and then I'm going to show you a picture to help you through it. I'll also do some definitions in here, which will help you. All right, so endochondral bones, like I said, are most bones of the body except the clavicle and the bones of the skull. So what's going to happen is all bones have to have a framework, and the framework for endochondral bones is going to be hyaline cartilage. So a framework of the shape of the bone is going to form, is going to form by hyaline cartilage. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get the development of the periosteum. Now what the periosteum is, it's, it's the living tissue that surrounds the bone that actually supplies the bone, that supplies the bone with its blood supply and its nerve supply. So the periosteum is going to develop early, and what it's going to do, it's going to supply the bone with osteoblasts. And osteoblasts, remember, are going to build bone. So this periosteum is going to develop, and then you're going to get the supply of osteoblasts into this hyaline cartilage model. Then what you're going to get in the diaphysis is what's called the primary ossification center. This is where bone will be start to be built. It will, the osteoblasts will start to put bone down, will start to put bone down. Now, in the long run, what will happen is that diaphysis will become hollow, forming the medullary canal or cavity uh, as bone formation continues. Now, what will happen is near birth, you will get what are called the secondary ossification centers, which occur at the epiphysis of either end of the bone. So what will happen is you'll get blood supply in there, and they'll start applying bone, start putting down bone. When babies are born, the epiphysis of their bones are usually still cartilage, which doesn't matter because it's not like they're going to go walking around. So they're non-weight bearing, so that really doesn't matter. What you'll do then is you'll get what's called the epiphyseal growth plate, which will occur here at the ends of long bones. And this is how bones through this area, this is where bones will continue to grow as the child gets older. Now when you're finished with growth, the epiphyseal growth plate closes, so it becomes bone. And again, I'll show you that on the next slide. All right, so let's review what we learned here. Here's your hyaline cartilage model. Let me change colors. Here's your hyaline cartilage model. Here's your hyaline cartilage model here. So here's our framework. Then what will happen, happen is you get that developing periosteum. And what will happen is you'll get a periosteum around here. And then what will happen is from that periosteum, the blood supply will enter the diaphysis where you'll get your primary ossification center. So this is where we're going to start to put down bone. Then what will happen, like I said, is close to birth, you'll get what are called the secondary ossification centers, which are located in the epiphysis, the ends of the long bones. Now right in here, right in this area here, is what we call the growth plates. And you can see them here. So as the child gets older and their bones grow, what will happen is, these growth plates, which are made of cartilage, cells will put down more cartilage. So they'll put down more cartilage, and then what happens is the osteoblasts will come in and put in more bone. So they put in more cartilage, put in more bone, put in more cartilage, put in more bone, and then the bones will get longer. The other thing that has to happen is that as the bones get longer, they also have to remodel themselves. So here you have the femur. Well, the head of the femur, the shape of it, it's going to have to change as the bone gets longer. Here's the other growth plate. So again, what happens is the bone puts down cartilage. We grow cartilage. Bone follows the cartilage. And then what happens at different stages, it usually happens, it does happen earlier for females, is those growth plates will close. So right here you see the, glo the closed growth plates. Now in females, they usually go through their growth spurts earlier in life due to hormones. So you'll see girls in 6th and 7th grade are usually taller than the boys because they have started their major growth spurt. About two years after a girl starts her period is when those growth plates are going to close. So estrogen, the primary sex hormone in females, actually stimulates growth initially, but then after it's been there for a couple of years and they've gone through a cycle, then it actually causes the growth plates to close. In males, the growth spurts may not occur till later. And then what happens is the growth plates usually close later in males than in females. So it's not unusual for males to continue to get taller into their college years. So that's just the basics of 
bone formation. What you need to be familiar with is where the primary ossification center is, sorry, where the primary ossification centers are, uh, where the secondary ossification centers are, the basics of a growth plate and the fact that it's cartilage, which is then replaced with bone and so on. Okay, so that's the basics of bone formation. Now I briefly want to talk about how bones heal. Now of course it does depend on how severe the bone is, break is, and what kind of bone break it is or fracture it is, and you're going to learn those on your own. But I just want to go through it in steps. So let's pretend for some reason you go climbing into a tree and you fall out of it and you break your bone. The first thing that's going to form is you're going to get a blood clot. All these cells that put down cartilage and put down bone, they need a framework. So this blood clot, this blood clot is going to provide a framework in which to rebuild the bone. And then what's going to happen is we're going to get what's called a cartilage callus. So this blood supply gets into the area where the break is and it starts to put down cartilage cells and you get what's called a cartilage callus. Now at this point you still have you still have the cast on. You still have the cast on and obviously the bone's not incredibly strong at this point. Then what's going to happen is osteoblasts are then going to replace that cartilage callus with what's called a bony callus and it may start out as spongy bone. It may turn out as spongy bone, start out as spongy bone. Now what you'll notice here you see this little bulge so this may be the time at which you actually get the cast off. You may see this bony callus that sticks out. Now it's a myth that your bone is stronger where it was broken or where it was fractured than the rest of the bone is. When you get your cast off, it may actually be somewhat stronger than the rest of the bone. But in the long run, we don't want one part of the bone to be strong because if that part is strong, that makes the rest of the bone weaker. So what you'll see happen over seven or eight months, you'll get rid of that callus. So the bone, again, will become, will become compact bone on the outside, will become compact bone on the outside, and will look like the rest of the bone. There still may be a little remnants of the fracture. You may see a line. You may see a line in the x-ray. Again, this bone healing process does depend on the type of fracture. If the bone are not next to each other, if one end of the bone's here and the other end's here, obviously medicine's going to have to help put those fractures together to let the healing process occur with pins and those kind of things. So again, this just talks about the remodeling. Now I just want to show you a few x-rays. Um, a student gave me a CD once of a bunch of x-rays, so I want to share part of them with you. So what you should try now is to see how many of these bones that you can actually name. You're looking at the wrist here. Okay, you're looking at the wrist, here's your radius, here's your ulna, here are your carpals, here are your metacarpals, all in here, and then here are your phalanges. Obviously this joint is slightly dislocated. Oops, wrong way. And figure out where you are here. Here you're in your lower leg, here's your tibia, Here's your fibula on the lateral side. Again, this type of fracture is going to need a little help to heal. you got to kind of place them back in so the healing process can occur. This shows you a hip replacement. Um, this is actually, here's your acetabulum. Here's what's mimicking the head of your femur. This is actually pounded into. It's a metal spike that's pounded into your femur. Here you can see the ischium. Here's the pubis bone here. So they replace the acetabulum with kind of a plastic, a medical plastic, and then they replace it with this. Right now I think you're limited that you can have two hip replacements because there's only, only so many times they can pound that spike into the diaphysis of your femur. Okay. This is scoliosis. Okay, This is scoliosis. It's a later, lateral curvature of the spine. And this is something not very bright to do. Um, I think this person did live. That's why we laugh at it, but you don't want to shoot a nail up through your skull. And the last one is one thing you should never wear when you're getting an x-ray done of your chest is you should never wear nipple rings. So a student somehow found this x-ray here, if you can't see them, are little nipple rings right in here. So you not, should not have metal on when you take give, or you get an x-ray. Okay, that's the end of this video on basic bone formation.